Goldman Sachs slashes the year end S and P to three thousand six hundred. Now, if you remember, just the start of the year itself, Goldman Sachs came in and gave a very high number for the S and P five hundred to reach. Do you remember? It was not three thousand six hundred. That's for sure. It was not four thousand five hundred. It was five thousand one hundred. Oh my goodness! So the thing is this: we all know that how Goldman Sachs actually do their little little game, and we have been seeing long enough. So if you would have listened to them, then most likely you will have got hit very badly. All right. Before we start this session once again, disclaimer apply as usual, and thank you, Ames, for the kind sponsorship. Now, David Costin, okay, he is the equity strategist for Goldman Sachs. Okay, he was giving a target of four thousand three hundred. Now, that was that was in the mid in the midpoint because earlier start of the year itself, it was at five thousand one hundred. Okay, so now the thing is this: instead of expecting four thousand three right now, he has slashed it by another sixteen percent and is looking at three thousand six hundred level. Okay, so this is something that. Wow. Okay. So if you look back here, is the reason is because they felt that there is a little bit due to the current risk right now, like the leverage, the labor intensity, the currency, the crowding, and all these tells you that, according to them, that this could bring the market down further. And of course, now they are expecting a seventy-five basis point. They expect a fifty basis point in this um. December, then January, and so forth. Hence, with all this information, they feel that now the market will have to trade a little bit lower because the S and P five hundred closed somewhere around three thousand seven hundred last night. So there's about another another hundred points from where we are right now. Okay, but you do not forget this at the start of the year itself, or at least late of last year. Goldman Sachs David Costin says that the S and P five hundred has no problem. It will be going to five thousand one hundred. Okay, remember this is something that he said last year December. And of course, when he said this, is how many many people were asking me, Cal, what's your view? I said, no way, the market will go down. And from January this year, we saw the S and P five hundred been going down all the way. Even until at this stage right now, so just wonder yourself, right? With all the resources and the people, I mean, how can they get it so badly wrong? So all I can say is this, all right? If you were to listen to them, probably somehow someone would have profited. So this is David Costin to let you take a look. Who is he? And look at it. Oh my goodness, he calls for a buy right here. Okay, you call for buy right here. Here we saw the S and P five hundred have been collapsing down all the way, all the way down to this particular area. Now the question is: Is the S and P really going to go down? Now I'm gonna give a little different view right now. Okay, let me just share with you. Okay, now if you look at this, guys. Okay, hold on a minute. Okay, on here to change the color. Okay. Now, thing is this, okay? Why so many people didn't expect this bad market to come? Because the last time back in 2021, when the market hits the all-time high, and then what happened? The market pulled back very nicely to the five percent mark. If you can see the 95, okay, and then basically ding dong a little bit and went to new all-time high. You got my point, all right? So that's the reason why the market came only five percent and the market rebounded, okay? So when you go to new all-time high again. And when it pulls back again, you can see very powerful buying came in just when it's just down by only by five percent. So it seems that every time when the market hit uh, come down by five percent, the market will go to new all time high. So that's the reason why at that point itself, a lot of traders didn't really expect the market to come off, right? So the last time when the then what happened was in January. This is where it all started. Okay, the market really came down to ninety five percent, and many traders expected the market to recover. Nope, it didn't. It went down all the way to the ninetieth percent. You saw that, okay? Then after that, it did rebound a little bit. That was cool. But when it got resisted at the ninety five, the market slammed down all the way down to about eighty five. Okay, so with all these things showing right now, the market has now come down all the way. Let me just clear the screen a bit. The market has came down all the way from here, all the way down to June low. Okay, let's take a look at June's low, and then the market did a very strong recovery, 
to almost a 90th percentile level and then recently with a span of one and a half month the market came back down now at the moment this could be a double bottom okay it could be a double bottom of course the market hasn't really um, had that cap uh, capitulation thingy that I want to look for look out for so I suspect that this time around the market may do a little bit of rebound a little bit okay why because the KS uh, the RSI is out right the last time we saw this in June period uh, January this year the market rebounded okay then after that we can see from the screen again let me just clear the screen a little bit for you to see this better all right so where this is where the bounce was okay then here is where the RSI come back to 30, the market bounce again, and then this was RSI 30, bounce again. Okay, so what you can see is that it's getting lower each time, right? So this is actually a more of a very bearish uh, movement, okay? But the problem is that this time around, the RSI has hit 30, but the market low did not really uh, create a new low. So there is a bit of suspect that the market may do a little bit rebound, okay? There might be a little bit rebound. But uh, in the long term, I still expect it to come down. So yes, indeed, I'm not saying that I'm actually advocating what David Costin said because I already tell you guys my view on S&P 500 is minimally 3,400. Okay, 3,400. Okay, so that is my personal target for not this, not I mean probably this year. Yeah. 3,400 okay this is my personal view okay so that's the reason why I think that um, I know that when you read this article it's all people like okay let's shut the market right I think we shouldn't do it right now because it's a bit too late to do that today maybe if you don't shut the market let the market go up a little bit then from the high level then you shot the market yep now the thing is that the VIX itself right we have been calling the buy VIX at around this area since um, this September period at the start of September I've been telling you guys to buy VIX at 22 and of course at that itself many people are saying that this is a crazy move but we were spot on once again the VIX went all the way up to 32 right now so at 32 level this is a good level to consider to take some profit I repeat take some profit okay now why because we do have Jerome Powell speaking um, later tonight okay at this 7 30 p.m and you will say you continue again on the next day at 10 15 p.m so of course Jerome Powell likely will repeat himself but if he wants to save the market a little bit he might turn a little bit and say that okay things are bad but maybe this and that you know he just tried to come in to just soften the whole thing or give a soft landing yeah so that's why I felt that you should consider take some profit today but but if the market really do that, okay, and the market pulls back, I think about 28 to 27 level, this is a good price to go in again and go for the next one. I'm still looking at the VIX to go past the 34, and if you can, maybe this time around 42. The 34 will be the first, if you buy at the lower end, 34 can take some profit, and 42 will be the ultimate target, okay? So that is what I have to share with you in terms of VIX. Then we look at this, okay? Now, one reason why I felt that the market may rebound a little bit because there is a very huge amount of people coming in to buy the put options. So when you see people rush to hedge their position and put volume spike, okay, all right, that means that you know it's it, it, we have seen this many times before. Whenever there's a spike, the media will tell you, okay, time to be very careful. But almost the next few days, the market will just rebound. I mean, the equity market will just rebound, and of course, the 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 put options will reduce. So it's more like a panic move than actually a hedge move. Okay, but we cannot deny that the volume have been pretty heavy since the start of the year itself. So this actually tells you that. Um, that could be a bigger move towards the downside later, not now, okay? But then, just for today alone, I think that we just go slow. There's no need to really go into like, oh, do a lot of selling today. I think it's too low to be selling, all right? And the, the other reason is because we have this projection in the market. So we all expected US to have a 1.5 GDP, but the thing is this now we might be looking at a much lower number. It could be 0.2 to 0.3. Now, yesterday we covered about UK and I share with you, right? UK, you know, it was, they expected a better number, a 3.4% for the GDP number, but now 
most probably it could be near to flat now this is the reason why a lot of traders are saying that oh my god this could be very bad right because you're talking about a, a country itself that's going to be 3.4 percent now the gdp could be only like it could be flat for the year so if that's going to be happening as well right likelihood i mean the currency they'll be bad then truth be told itself right we can see from the um this is the yesterday now we already tell you guys a few days ago that pound most likely there'll be some selling and incredible incredible yeah the market really really sold down the thing is this you can see back then since 16 or september my indicator both ksi and krw has turned to red okay in a way i mean flat is considered red after cyan so that was where by the the pound was trading at about 1.14 okay and now the pound has dropped last night the the uh, uk government came out this uh tax cut all right it's supposed to be good okay it's supposed to be good but the market take it as oh no that means that things are bad so the market actually sold down all the way to 103 feet level oh my god so one it was like 108 at one point 108 109 and it came down so it actually lost about nearly 500 pips overnight this is really a very big move there okay so because of that this actually speaks volume because this tells me that i have to be very very careful the market itself right might be might might be bad and uh, i have to be very careful on this but of course at the same time at the same time let me just, just do something here itself because there's some incoming messages coming in or i'm doing my this video recording but it's fine okay just give me a minute okay all right you can see right now that for the pound okay today all right it's a djdd all right it's a doji directional day and um, the mlp is 107357 so as long as the pound stays above 107357 for today the pound may get a little bit of a rebound okay a little bit of a rebound yep okay so what you're seeing right now is that the pound is doing a bit of rebound and because today is above the pivot one so the pound uh, has reason to stay up but if you ask me after this recovery i'm so sorry but i think pounds gonna come back down again and i said this before there is a good chance that we may see actually parity coming in okay so by saying this long enough i think that you guys know where am i looking for for the uk market okay so that is uh ends there for what about the pound so let's look at the chart right now and see what we have for today now wow look at china a50 china a50 has rebounded pretty strongly now it has basically yesterday we saw the strong reversal although it ended near the halfway mark but it was a bmb so i told my friends and traders hey, look this could be a turning point and the rsi was at 30 level it's something that i mentioned again it happened before back in july and I also mentioned that there is a very, very important connection of the trend and the 13,000 psychological level. Both of them comes together and that's why we have the strong recovery. But does it mean that it will go up? Nope. I think that the MA30 will be watched carefully at 13,200. If the market can stay above it and close above the MA30, uh, then we can see a recovery stage. But looking from the looking at it right now, right, all of them shows that every time we hit the MA30, even though it crossed it, but by the end of the day, it closed below, that shows selling pressure. Okay, so we didn't watch the MA30 very, very closely. Yep, very. Okay. Now let's look at this, um, the NASDAQ, just to take a look, quick one. Now Nasdaq, I have my KFC level today, washed out for that. That means that we're looking at 11,369 as a strong resistant calm support. If the market can stay above 11,369, the market will be going upwards. But if the market cannot stay above 369, then the selling should bring the Nasdaq back down again towards the 11 to the 10,800 mark. And that could be pretty scary. Yep. Okay, let's go to the charts for now. Let's take a look. Okay, for, let's look at the Dow. To begin with okay so the dow itself as long as today it stays above 29,437 mlp the dow could go back up again to 29,745 but both ksi and krw are red so the upside could be limited yeah now nasdaq today is recovering and i told you it's across my this kfc level and although the indicator wise both of them are red but to this is doji now doji directional day means the op will be the guided as long as the op i mean the market stays above op the market should be going higher right what's op is opening price yeah so 11,260 
276 is the MLP and the market now stays above opening price and it just crossed the pivot one. So this overall is a buy package, okay? So target, it could go all the way to 11,511 and that's the first, the nearest KCB level. S&P 500. Now, S&P 500, I already mentioned to you that could be a chance the market may rebound today and it's happening right now, 36.73. Watch out for that. As long as S&P stays above 36.73, the market is still going to go up a little bit, okay? KSI and KRW both are red, so selling pressure will be around, yep. Now, Hang Seng. Wow, Hang Seng is beautiful, right? I told you guys, as long as the market stays above OP and Pivot 1, which is 17675, it will be a buy, all right? So we always know that in TWB, that whenever the market hits the pivot, we should, don't, we should never fight against it. In fact, itself, if the market stays above the Pivot 1, it's a very strong buy. And of course, you can see from the chart, the color change do uh, us a favor to inform us that it's time to buy. And wow, look at the way the Hang Seng went up. Beautiful, right? Okay, so that is Hang Seng. How about Nikkei? Now, Nikkei, um, as you can see on the screen right now, that is actually pretty sideway. Uh, no much movement at the moment. All right, so 26.588 is the MLP for today. And now it's actually pedaling around there. So let's watch the market. But, but call KSI and KRW both are red, so that means selling pressure is still going to be around. Now DAX has just going to be opening in a very, very short while, all right, but of course already uh, we can see the, that was cash market I'm referring to, but for the futures market, it's already open. So now it's above MLP, MLP is 12,200, so as long as DAX stays above OP, there should be some buying. Interesting, despite the selling of the market, right, the KSI has turned red, but the KRW is still standing, staying blue and cyan, okay? So that's the reason why, although the market has came down, the selling usually don't really close near the low because the buying weightage is still there, all right? Okay, let's look at oil. Oh my goodness, oil yesterday plunged all the way down to $76 and that is the level that I'm watching, all right? So $75 is $75.85 area, that's whereby it will be a very good time to look at some model oil. Okay, look at over here itself for the crude oil, all right? Now crude oil today is uh, the MLP is at $77.58 and now we are right here. But KSI and KRW both are red, so that tells you that the selling pressure is still there. And I've been saying this, as long crude oil come down to $77, you can consider to buy a little bit small and keep. And this is what I meant, okay? $77, okay? Now, I'll talk about this, uh, my personal view on crude oil another time, but my point is this. I felt that right there would be a good chance to see crude oil bottoming up probably end of the year itself, okay? Now, this is the um, silver market first. Silver is recovering. It has crossed above the MLP slightly to date, but both KSI and KW are blue, and red and blue, so which means that the selling pressure will be there. Kind of expect to be resistant about 1894 for now, okay? That will be the pivot one. And of course for gold, now gold has done a great job. We say that gold will come down to 1620, right? And indeed it's all right, the market really hit 1620. It missed it by, to be able to be precise, it missed it by $1. What's the low is 36, uh, is 1620.99. And the extension is 1620, okay? So technically it missed, okay? Technically it missed. But as long as we can see the market really come down within three days, that shows that our system really has its merit. And of course at the moment now today, if we get stable MLP, the most likely is going towards 1651, that's pivot one level. Now both KSI and KCX are all in the negative zone, so we don't expect too much from the goal. But based on what I'm seeing right now, it's up by almost the $16 from the low. That could be due to the extension. And that's where I think the market may say, consider, okay, you know what? Maybe you should buy some precious metal and just keep it as a hedge. Who knows, all right? Okay, so that will be all for today. So. Take, stay to you in the market and I wish you all the best. Hope there's some question being asked is that, okay, about my view on the dollar, I just repeat myself, I believe that the dollar will still go higher and I still look at dollar to hit 115 region, okay? US dollar to hit 115, hence therefore, for short term buying of gold and crude oil is fine for some quick profit. All right, but once the dollar start to go back up again and stuff, right, that means that gold and crude oil will again come back down. Yep. Okay, that will be all for today. Thank you very much. I wish you the best for trading and make more money. Okay, bye-bye.